Bytes of Pi. Today's video will cover the second part of classes and objects. First part, we'll talk about accessors and mutators. Now, if you remember from our last, our last video, we talked about protecting member variables by making them private and only allowing access to them through different functions. These are called accessors and mutators. So, they're kind of commonly what better known as getters and setters. So when I talk about an accessor, that means how can I access the variables or the values from the class? And this is a function that start with the word get. So if I wanted to get the color or get the manufacturer or get the person's name, get name, it'll be a function called get and it returns the value of what you want to return. So that's accessors are the getters. I, how does somebody access your class? And the second part is mutators, which means mutators uh, mutating something means changing it, changing the value. So we call those the setters. So I'm setting a function, I'm setting values. These allow you to change the values in the class. So here I am, I'm using the setter function. I'm setting the color, passing it a value, and the class's color change. The the class's variable changes. Now here's another little piece that I wanted to point out. If here, here in this function, we have two variables that have the same name. Now, usually the computer will complain about this because it won't know what you're talking about. Um, so in order to make sure that the, that the computer knows which variable I'm talking about, I use the keyword this. So when I use this, I'm talking about this instance of car. So the, com the compiler knows that the color I'm referring to, the variable I'm referring to here by using this, is this color that, I'm de that I've declared here. And because I don't put the word this, it'll use the color that's being, the variable that's being passed in here. Now this is sometimes confusing when you're reading it, so sometimes it's a really, it's a good idea to change this to something different than this. So I could say color input or something like that, and I could say this color equals color input, so I can tell the difference between these two color variables. But note, these are two different variables. Next thing we'll talk about is overloading methods. Now, method overloading is simply having two or more methods in a class that have the same name but a different method signature. So, what? It, so here you can see two functions that are called or methods that are called add. They both have the same name. Now, if they have the same set of type of parameters, the computer would compile. The the compiler would complain about it saying hey I've got the same name I've got the same function twice the reason why the compiler doesn't complain about this is because of the method signature and that's this portion right here the, the method signature is essentially the number order and type of parameters in a method so here you can see that even though they have the same name they have a different signature this function has one parameter and that's an integer or just one integer uh, this function has two parameters. It's, uh, they're both integers, but there's two of them. So the computer says these are two separate functions, even though they have the same name. And they do very, sometimes when you're creating them, they'll do very similar things. But here you can see in this function, say I always want, I don't want to have to keep typing in 50 as my second input. I'm hard coding in 50. So it'll add whatever, the, whatever value I am putting in plus 50. Um, in this one, I want to give a little more more flexibility for the user, so I can put whatever value it is, in, and instead of just hard coding 50, I can put another value in. Okay. Now the compiler will know when I'm calling this based on what parameters I'm passing. So here, here's an example. I'm creating a new class test, and I'm calling both functions, but the compiler will know which function because here I'm passing in one integer so I'll so the compiler will know to call this function that only has one integer input and it, when it calls the same class calls the add function with two parameters it'll call this function now it gets kinda crazy too because say I, will, I can still have one parameter but say I want to pass in a string or maybe a double I could create another function that had a add double input and it would have a different uh, I can do something different here. Now note, just changing the return value doesn't change the signature. So if I put, say, 
public double add an int input, it would complain because this is not part of the signature. The signature, the way you can over when you when you overload a function, you're only changing the order and types and number of inputs in uh, that that are coming into the function. Okay. Now, if you notice, these functions are really similar. If you wanted to get creative, you could actually have one function call the other function. So you can see add input one is really, I can act passing input in as the first parameter and put passing 50 in as a second parameter. So if you notice, take a look at how I can just easily change this. So here I've got, instead of returning input one plus input 50, I'm calling function and passing in input as the first parameter and I'm passing 50 as the second parameter. So it's confusing, it's baking your noodle. You don't have to really do these type of work. You can you could go back to the way it was before, you know, and, and clearly put that out. But if you really wanted to kind of do some advanced stuff, you can have one, one overloaded function call the other, load, other overloaded function. Now, constructors also can be overloaded. Um, here you can see I have two car constructors and again one I'm passing in one string with just the color and I'm defaulting I'm kind of hard coding in Honda as a manufacturer so I don't if I am a Honda manufacturer I don't want to have to keep typing in Honda every time but here if I wanted to create a, a car of a different model I have the option of whoops I have the option of passing in a manufacturer and changing it so it doesn't have to be Honda so again same name just a different number of parameters, different type of parameters coming in. That's method overloading. The next part about classes and objects we'll talk about is relationships. Now we're not going to talk about all the relationships because that'll get into chapter 5 and chapter 6, but we're going to talk about the most simple relationship uh, objects can have. Now if you think, think about the world around you, everything is made up of other things. For example, a car has four wheels, a steering wheel, seats and engine, and a frame, etc. So just Java tries to model behaviors of real world things. So I've got, you know, uh, in, in, in a car, uh, each of these parts do different things. Like an engine has maybe has four pistons and it runs and it has, takes in gas and it outputs energy and outputs some torque. Uh, the steering wheel allows you to turn left and right and it through, through the chassis and, and uh, drive train, it'll turn these wheels. These wheels are what touches a road and makes the car go forward and the seats have their own you know maybe have a seat heater or something like that all of these pieces together working in harmony make the car um, we can say that the car has a steering wheel the car has an engine the car has four wheels and the car has a steering has seats you can say that this is defines the has a relationship is uh, uh, one one object is made up of other objects. Now Java tries to model real-world examples. Here I have the car and here you can see that a car is made up of other objects. They each can do different things. Here I have four wheels, front pa front driver, the front passenger wheel, the back driver, and the back passenger wheel, uh, engine, main engine, and the steering wheel. So you can see that these objects, one uh, the Main, the main object has references to all these other objects and they can do something else. So a car has a front driver wheel, has a main engine, has a steering wheel. This is what we call like a has a relationship where one object has references to other objects. Now we can get uh, another type of relationship is passing in the same instance. Sometimes I want to compare two of the two objects of the same class. So sometimes you'll want to compare it. A uh, creative way is to pass one instance into the other instance. So you've seen this with actually strings. There's a function called equals that will return a Boolean if they equal. In this case, it'll, it'll return false and this will never happen. But if I said, hey, and string two equals, Hey, when I set when I have string one, I'm calling the fun I'm calling the equals function of string one, and passing it string two, and it'll return a boolean back. So I'm having one instance passed into the other instance, and it'll return back a value. Now I can do something creative 
uh, with a custom object. Say I wanted to see if two student objects are the same. Well, how do I know two student objects are the same? Well, maybe I just want to compare their names. So here you can see I've got a, a student class and I'm passing, I have a function called equals that passes in another student. So I can have one student, I'm getting the name of the first student, and I'm comparing it to the other student's name. Here's, a, here's an example. So again, like I have student Mike, student Jim. I'm passing in the student. So I had student A's function, equals function, is passing in student B. And here I'm, name is Mike equals Jim. And then that will return back whether that's true or not. This concludes the video on classes and objects. Thank you for your time.